Lord, you're good. Thank you, Lord God. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Forever proclaim. I'm forever proclaim. He's good. He's good. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Exalt his name for who is like our Lord and King is exalted above the heavens. So I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord, I will praise his name, I will praise his name, I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord, I will praise his name, I will praise his name. For who is like our Lord and King, His glory and His fame is exalted. It's a declaration on today. It's not an option. I 
I might, maybe, if he's good, if he brings me out. But I will bless the Lord at all times, Sister Belinda, because he is good. He is good. He is good. Why don't you greet your neighbor on this morning? Let them know how glad you are to see them in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory. of God at 805 Sherman Drive <laughs> we are excited we are excited now if you feel like there is an extra pep in our step this morning sister Virginia that's because the bishop is preaching this morning y'all the bishop is back in the house Woo! Woo! we are so excited our pastor and first lady are uh, away and we pray for them we are covering them in prayer uh, and for a safe return home and for success as they minister on the road. But we are so excited, Bishop, that you are preaching today. We are so, we miss our Bishop. <laughs> man, oh man, I can tell y'all what, some, some sermons, what, that sword that came up to the pulpit, man, and, and, the, and if that don't wet your fire, your wood's wet. Like, come on now. I can go, I got a whole book of bishopism. So meet me after church. We need to write a book on bishopisms. It's a bishopism. So we're excited. We you may be seated. Let me get the announcements. That's not what's on this paper. So I need to stay in line before I, I might get in trouble when the pastor comes back, y'all. So I'm gonna stay with it. But I'm just excited because the bishop is here and he's preaching today. So I have the mic. Oh Jesus, help us, Lord. <laughs> Somebody say, August is, August is here. Can you believe it? August is here. I cannot. I cannot. But this Thursday and Friday night, I want you to join us at Summit. Somebody shout, Summit. Summit. It's our annual revival gathering for the North Texas area. And services will begin at 7.30 a nightly at the Plano Center. So there will be details on our social media platforms this week. Look at that. We do know that there will be a great number of Calvary choir members participating in the Mass Choir on Friday. So we are excited to have an opportunity to worship with such a great group of individuals. Uh, and then we want you to save the date. Save the date. Sunday, August the 28th. We want you to join us, uh, our Celebrate Recovery team. So we are excited about Celebrate Recovery. Last week, Pastor preached and taught us about reaching and outreach and connecting. And for, I can say, over 10 years, decades, we've heard the bishop in our services, you know, how would the Lord know his? By the love that we have one to another. Celebrate Recovery will be an opportunity for Calvary and each and every one of us in this room to love, to demonstrate that love, not just within these four walls, but beyond these four walls. So August the 28th, join us as we kick off Celebrate Recovery. But what we want you to join us with now, because praise just didn't come just to praise. We came to join you. So would you help us worship on this morning? Would you stand to your feet and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus.
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. My breakthrough is right now. My breakthrough is right now. <laughs> no more waiting. My breakthrough is right here, right now. My breakthrough because I got a praise that will not let, that the enemy can't stand up to. I got a praise. I got a shout. I got a voice of victory. I got a praise that the enemy don't understand. I got a praise that's gonna break every chain. Everything is gonna be broken in my praise. right now come on can you join that with me can you begin to sing that come on let's do it again let's do it again my breakthrough somebody need to break through come on my breakthrough is in my praise right here right now my breakthrough you better get your breakthrough don't be afraid that don't be afraid to act like you you can move it you can get a breakthrough because you have done a praise like you're about to do today. I'm about to shout with a shout of victory. My breakthrough. He won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop. Right now, he made me a promise. <laughs> that he's going to fill me, he's going to deliver me, <laughs> he's going to set me free. Promises of God are yea and amen. So you can praise him like it's an amen already. <laughs> you can praise him like it's already done. You can praise him like you've already seen it, completed, it's done. I can thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! I get up on Sunday, I can feel a breakthrough. <laughs> I just feel a breakthrough. Hallelujah! My God, my God! He said he would do it, and he gave his life for it on the cross. He was still ministering to others. He was still looking down. Father, forgive him. <laughs> this is your mother. This is your son. This is your brother. He, he still was pointing out. He's on the cross with him hurting. He still was ministering to those around him. He still was speaking into their lives. And you know when he went to, when he died, you know there's no resurrection without death. Sometimes we have to go through some things. But you know when Christ died, I mean, the, all the things that, that went shut down, everything that went blank, all the tissue, everything, and all the liver, and all the heart and everything, but when God breathed life back into him, new liver, new heart, new, new things, he got up, all new, but yet he kept one thing, those scars in his hand. <laughs> he kept one thing for Thomas because <laughs> he could have had a whole new body but he kept those scars in his hand he wanted us some of us like Thomas said I won't I won't believe it till I see it till I touch it and so he got up with those scars in his hand he got up for Thomas but he got up for each and every one of us because he knows us by name. So when he got up, 
he got up with us and in mind. So today we ought to praise him like he did it just for me. Today we ought to worship like he did it just for me. <laughs> we ought to give him glory like he did it just for me. <laughs> Those scars in his hands are just for me. <laughs> Those things that he went through are just for me. <laughs> I didn't deserve it, but yet he chose to do it just for me. <laughs> hey, he did it for me. He caught it all motion, so I will praise him. If no one else do it, <laughs> I will lift up a praise all by myself. Hallelujah. Because he did it just for me. <laughs> Glory to his name. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just for me. My Lord, my God. He could have got up anyway, but he did it just for me. He knows my name. He knows where I've been, what I've been through, and the scars that I have to carry. But I'm going to carry my scars because he carried his. And I'm thinking my scars is going to be a witness to how good he's been and where he brought me from. So I'm not ashamed of my scars. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of what I've been through. Because what I've been through brought me to this point. Hey, did I know him? That he's a deliverer, he's a healer, he's a way maker, he's a mind regulator, he's a heart fixer, he's a relationship builder, he's all that I need. Woo. Hey, so I'm not ashamed of my scars. And I will praise him like I've got some scars to remind me of how good he's been, of what he brought me through. Because he brought me through. I will stand up and declare he's good. <laughs> he's God. <laughs> he's a good God. He's God all by himself. None like him. None shall see him. None shall know him but the goodness of the Lord. I will praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Our God is good. We're in an atmosphere where anything is possible. So if you need a miracle today, we will stand and declare it over your life. We will plead the blood. We will stand and believe the word. We will speak good things over you and declare to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If you need a miracle today, I want you to step forward somewhere too in this service and stand up and declare it. My healing I need. Financial blessing I need. I want to be a blessing to others. So in this service, somewhere when the bishop is preaching, somewhere during altar call, you declare, you come running and said, oh, today is my day. <laughs> Something great is about to happen. In Jesus' mighty name, in this place. Will anybody agree with me? In this place, today, a miracle is about to happen. A miracle is about to happen. A miracle is about to happen in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. We got things to get to. We're excited about what God is doing. I am for sure, I am confident in this. That he is able to do exceedingly great in me. Above that I can even imagine. I can't even imagine how what he's doing in each and every one of your lives. My God, my God, how good he is. It's offering time in the house. We're going to give you an opportunity to break yokes, make decorations, give you an opportunity to give as unto the Lord, a sacrificial gift, a, a gift unto the Lord. It's then that, hey, he's been good to me. I can't buy it. I can't pay him back for it, but I will offer up a gift unto him. I wouldn't come asking for a miracle without a gift. I wouldn't come see the king without a gift. <laughs> I know if, if whatever I give, he can do greatly above that. So I bring my gift 
I bring my sacrifice. I bring it with joy. I bring it in peace. I bring it cheerfully. I'm not trying to buy in what, what God is trying to, trying to buy what God has in store for me, but I'm just offering a sacrifice, offering a gift. Sometimes you may not even have anything, but Lord, here's the gift of my time. Here's the gift. Here's the gift of what I have. And Lord, I know you're going to make it better. You're going to make me a blessing. I'm not always looking for a blessing. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing in someone's life. I want to be that, it, it, nothing but that, just that $10 when they need it most. You know, most of us want to give $10,000, but, oh, if I get that, Lord, if you will now, just ten dollars at the right time could save somebody's life so let's be obedient let's hear what God is saying to each and every one of us we have many ways to give you can go to the secure give app you can go on our website and give that way you can give through the app and you can just mail a check to Calvary UPC PO box 458 Denton Texas 76202 and if you do it that way, just put a little note in there saying how thankful you are for this ministry or how you need a prayer request or, or just take time out to write it. If you start journaling and writing, you look back and see how many blessings God has bestowed upon us. You look back and see what God has already done and you'll just be gaining momentum for your future. You'll be start looking at things. Well, he did it back then. <laughs> he brought me out back then. <laughs> Why would he leave me right now? So because he did it then, I'm going to rejoice like he's going to do it again. <laughs> My God, it's something about your praise today. Hey, Shanda. It's something about your praise that's going to be your breakthrough today. My God, I can't move from that. Your praise, your praise, your praise. You call it almost something. Your praise. Woo. It's going to say how good he's been and the things he's done. Sister Bradley, come join me. Hallelujah. Oh, I thought he wanted to say something. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Y'all come on and stand. Let's declare this word over our giving. <laughs> Upon the authority and by the orders of your word, I am giving and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither and giver, and I bring my tithe and offerings today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns checks in the mail gifts and surprises bills paid off debts dismissed royalties received my greatest desire is that my whole family will be saved and walking with god in perfect health abundance and to walk in divine favor and blessings i shall be blessed going in i shall be blessed going out and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. And it is so, and so it is. And so it is. Let's pray over God giving. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus, in your name. Every yoke is broken right now. We declare it and decree it over these, each one of these lives, God. The curse is broken. Whatever they're dealing with the mountains that they have to overcome. We speak to it right now. And we cast it out. We believe you and we receive it right now. By the precious name that is above every name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give as unto the Lord. Get ready to give a...
a sacrificial gift unto the Lord. Get ready to give your praise as unto the Lord. You know, there ought to be a time where you ought to want to do something different. That I want God to know how much I care. That I need Him. So I'm going to do what He says. I'm going to be obedient to the Word. And I'm going to learn how to fight my battles. Yes. I'm finna grow up today. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to grow up today. <laughs> I'm not going to lean on anybody else's prayers. I'm not going to lean on what mama did, what grandmother did. Today, I'm going to learn how to fight my battles. <laughs> Today, I'm going to learn how to stand. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be a witness. <laughs> Today, I'm coming with authority and in the name that is above every name. <laughs> I'm going to praise him like it's already done. <laughs> I'm going to praise him because I know how good he's been. <laughs> he's been good. <laughs> good. He will be good by the power and authority in his name. Let's give him a praise in this house. Would you stand to your feet and sing this song with us? Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battle. Hey, 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 hey. This is how I fight my battle. This is how we do it. Open your mouth and sing. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. So this is how I fight my battles. Look out, devil. I'm coming for you. <laughs> This is how I fight my battle. Hey, that sickness got to go. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Come on. This is how we do it. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. I'm not ashamed of it. This is how we fight. This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how we fight. This is how I fight my battle. I'm in a this war. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. 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 You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
there's no God like Jehovah. The battle is the Lord's. The war's already over. Hallelujah. Woo. Misty, you're leading the praise over there. You're leading the victory over there. You're the proclaimer of victories today. Hallelujah. Woo. And all the more in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Woo. Turn to somebody, give them a big high five and say the victory is the Lord's. And the battle is already over. We win in Jesus' name. Would you stand all over the building today? God richly bless you. Thank you for your kindness and your love toward Sister Hudson and myself. We're missing our pastor and our pastor's wife today very, very much. Brother and Sister Knight are in Terre Haute, Indiana. And they are at a very special ministry conference that pours into pastors and their wives. And we pray that they come back home refreshed and blessed beyond measure. Can anybody say amen to that? Would you let them know that you miss them with a round of applause today? We love and appreciate you, Brother and Sister Knight. We are here standing in this pulpit for the first time to preach in 90 days. That's the first time that that's ever happened in over 30 years of pastoring here. And we miss you, and we miss bringing the Word of God to our congregation, although we've been quite busy across the country. And we are very surprised. And uh, uh, Brother David Knight, I love you. Honor you today. Thank you for your kindness to our family. Love you so much. And uh, those that pray for us when we go out. And then we get to come back home. Did you hear what it says? We get to come back home. And we get to be in the presence of the Lord with the people we love the most on the whole face of the earth. So I'm thankful I won't take more of your time than needed today. We're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Then we're going to read from Romans chapter 13 verse 12 to establish a scriptural setting today. And uh, to our visitors and guests that are here with us today. How delighted we are. How happy we are to share this wonderful Sunday morning with you. We pray God's richest blessings for each of you and that you find a place for new beginnings right here at Calvary Church. God richly bless you as our prayer. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly, everybody say boldly, unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, everybody say mercy, and find grace to help in the time of need. Coming before the Lord boldly. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 13. Verse 12. Well, maybe I... That's 14 and 12. Can we do 13 and 12? Well, I can just read it out of the book. I still have one of those. The Word of God says this. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off. Everybody say, cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to speak to us for a few moments today about this subject. It's time to be bold. It's time to be bold. Look at this army on the right. Look at this army on your left. These are bold men. These are individuals that are about to engage in battle. And surely life is a battlefield today like never before. And the bold church will be the surviving church. The bold church in faith. The bold church in, in moving forward in action, being proactive, winning the lost at any cost. That will be the church that survives these times. So it's time to be bold. Turn to somebody and say, it's time to be bold. 
Well, let's say it like we're really bold. It's time to be bold. Fantastic. God bless you. Let's clap our hands for the glory of the Lord today. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. I have found all throughout Scripture that blessings, glory, victory, power, and provision favors those who are bold in their retort. You know what? We live in a milk toast society, watered down, barely breathing, barely alive. We really do. There are so many factions at work in the government and politics and social reform that are taking us away from the core values of scripture, taking us away of what we should believe and what we should hold fast to in the day in which we live. So therefore we're living in a watered down society who has few core beliefs about anything virtuous. Thank you all seven of you. I truly appreciate your support. Amen. I'm not Tucker Carlson here today, so don't get nervous. Okay, I'm not going to be some crazy uh, politician that's trying to float something by you politically. But I will tell you this. I will tell you this. If there ever was a time for the church to stand strong, it's the hour in which we live. If there ever was a time for parents to stand strong against everything else that's coming against our children, it's the hour in which we live. If there ever was a time that young people should stand strong in your public school, even in your church, it's the hour in which we live. If there ever was a time that grandparents should put on the mantle of prayer and of fasting for our children, our children's children, it's the hour in which we live. So let me tell you something. It's time to be bold. Amen. Nobody likes a wimp. Nobody likes anything wimpy. Amen. Well, hello, Julie. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. How's your wimpy husband? Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That don't sound good. I don't, even, I, I don't want nobody to refer to me as wimpy. There was only one dude that back when I was a kid called wimpy, and he was always begging for a hamburger. Amen. He couldn't get her done. He just had to eat it. You know, I, I, I gladly uh, what pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I did a flyby on 90% of the congregation right there. Wimpy. Look it up. I don't want to be wimpy. It was years ago my son was playing t-ball. And uh, he was five years old. He was out there on the uh, battlefield. I mean the ball field. <laughs> it is, man. When your kid playing t-ball for the first time, you know, and he's out there and the ball sitting on the tee and he's getting wound up to hit that thing about 10 feet out into the infield and be tagged or thrown out right before he gets to first base. But I was loving it. I was excited about it. And, 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 and let me tell you what kind of parent t-ball parent I was. I was a fence grabber. I never sat down from the word go. I got my fingers through that, that chain link fence. And I'm screaming so loud. Go, 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 go. Oh, no, that's okay. Come back in here. Come in here. Come in. I'll hug you. I love you. You'll do better next time if they let you play. Ever again. There's a lot of rotation goes on in kids' t-ball. If your kid ever strikes out at kids' t-ball, he ain't never playing again. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going too fast for some of you. I can tell right now. Well, my kid t-ball team, they had a very prominent businessman here in Denton. And if you're watching today... You know exactly who you are. And guess what? I've never forgotten you. And I have a very select set of skills. Moving right along. 
And uh, so, you know, Patrick's out there doing the best he can do. And somehow or another, later in the game, he, he, he hits a ball. It goes out there a little ways. And, and he, he don't make the base again. And the, the angry coach comes, Brother Chris, <laughs> and he kneels down in front of my five-year-old son. Okay, now I got to act this out. And he grabs my little five-year-old by the shoulders. Oh. You know, and he just, he's so angry that he's shaking my boy, cursing in his face, calling him idiot and stupid and, and, then, and then ugly names that they're curse words. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, you can be a fence grabber and then if they push you a little too hard, you become a fence climber. And it wasn't just a second. I found myself over that fence. I don't even know how I got over there, Chris. I ran out there. <laughs> I looked over at that, at that coach and I said, I, I don't know what to say. Just stand up. I told him to stand up. He said, don't get out here and interrupt the way I coach. I said, okay, all right, listen. Patrick, you go back and sit down because I don't want you to get anything on you. And I said, I looked at him to, with, the, with all the Jesus I had. And I pulled the dipstick on my Holy Ghost right before I got out there. And I was running about two quarts slow. And I said, call him Terry. That was his name, Terry. I said, Terry, you need to pray. He said, why in the blank do I need to pray? <laughs> I said, just pray that I'm enough Christian to talk to you instead of working this out a completely different way. Now, y'all looking at me like, Pastor, you did that? Yeah, Terry. Tell him, I did it. I told Terry, I said, guess what, Terry? I'm fixing to take you out to your truck. And I said, I'm going to open the door and I'm going to put you in it. And you can go home because you have some anger management problems. And you just need to go home and let one of us coach the rest of the game. Amen. Now, coach, how was that? Okay, was that good? Really? That happened to you? No. That, that would have been you. You would have handled it the same way. So, oh, okay. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Police, right? Jail, all that. Okay. Well, <laughs> sometimes you just got to be bold. And I thought, you know what? My five-year-old can take it, but there might be a five-year-old to go out there on the field could would never forget that, never be able to handle that, and never play ball again because he had an angry coach. Amen? So every once in a while, when trouble comes... When the enemy comes, when doubt, fear, and all of these things come in like a flood, somebody better get bold. Because if you're not bold, you're going to get run smooth over and be nothing but history. I'll tell you this, uh, I have a history, but it's not a bad history. It's a history of victory. And somebody here today, clap your hands. You've got the history of victory. Because sometimes bold things require bold responses. Amen. There were 10 lepers who cried out with a loud voice. Everybody say loud. They didn't whisper when Jesus walked by. Y'all have heard me say it before. They cried with, cried with a loud voice. Disciples, disciples told them to be quiet. Don't trouble the master. I just made them louder. Amen. How many of you have ever been in a... Uh, Sister Hudson in here. Oh, okay, good. I think the monitor's broken there. So, have you ever been in an uh, uh, amplified discussion with your spouse and then told them to hush or quiet down 
Or maybe it had come to the point you'd simply said, shut up. Not good, not good, you're right. First of all, let me say this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Just, just go on. Admit guilt and just take it on the chin and keep on going. It ain't worth it. It'll only happen about once. Never happen twice. So listen, it's not, it ain't even good to happen the first time. You know, just say, I'm sorry, baby. What was it? What did you want me to do? What, what was it that I needed to do? I am so sorry. How can I make this up to you? I just feel like being real now. I just feel like being bold now. Come on. Do you want some wimpy preacher preaching to you today? Or you want somebody willing to tell you the truth? Ten lepers cried out. The disciples got mad. That just made the lepers mad. And they cried out louder. Jesus told them, said, they don't even have to come over here. I'm powerful enough just to speak the word. I'm telling you, Jesus is powerful enough just to speak the word. Somebody today, you need the Lord of glory to speak the word into your life. You think you got to do this, 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 and this to get God's attention. He's already got God's attention. You know, Brother Bradley said, your name is engraved in the palm of his hand. Maybe it's engraved in the palm of his hand in, in the shape of a nail-scarred hand. He'll never forget you. He'll never let you go. He'll never let you down. So we'll tell you this. You're always on his mind. He knows you were sick. Jesus knew what route to take to go where he was going that day. He knew he would encounter those 10 lepers on that journey. He knew that they would cry out to them. He's the infinite Lord of glory that knows the beginning from the end. He had the plan. Jesus spoke to them to prove who he was. To humanity. To the bystanders. To the other people at the church who are having a struggle believing what you already believe, but you haven't been proactive enough to be bold. I'm going to let that just sink in for a minute. I'm going to sit up here and sit by water like pastor. Evian. But I'm afraid he's already drank out of it. No, I'm just kidding. Jesus knew who he was talking to. He knew what was about to happen. He even knew that only one would return and give thanks. He said, where are the, but where are the nine? He said, there, there's all but this one Samaritan that returned to give thanks. And the one Samaritan was not healed but made whole or made complete. That means everything that fell off grew back. And he was the ultimate witness. You know how you become the ultimate witness as a Christian? You live a thankful life. A grateful life. You live a life upstanding. And you be bold about your thankfulness. You share your testimony. You tell somebody how good God is. You show it. You prove it. Yeah. Esther went before the king unannounced. This was a death sentence. Yet Esther had power with the king because she was the most beautiful woman in the land. And she knew how much the king loved her. When she went before the king... If he did not tip his scepter toward her, she would be instantly killed before she ever made her way to the throne. When Esther went before the king unannounced, his scepter remained stoic, static, never moved. But she went before him anyway. And there were those who told Esther, who knows, but you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Is there something... So powerful, enigmatic, so pressing, so glorious, so amazing, so wonderful that somebody here today has come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And God is just waiting on you to obey his word, to have faith and not doubt. Get bold, stand on your own two feet, start proclaiming the word, start proclaiming the prophecy. I don't think you heard me. Start proclaiming the prophecy, the prophetic word of God that's already been spoken over your life. Come on, somebody. Start proclaiming the prophecy that's already been spoken over your life and start receiving the manifest glory of God. Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree and had dinner with the king that night. 
Job said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. Only to find that the latter end of Job was greater than the first. Hallelujah. It's not enough just to come to church to have victory. Because there are people who come to church every service and leave just like they came. It's only the bold. I said, it's only the bold, Sister Christie. It's only the bold that step out and say, I don't care what anybody else does. I don't care whether anybody else feels this or not, but I feel to lift my hands to stand before the Lord of glory and to give him thanks and to bless his holy name. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what my family does. I don't care what my neighbors do. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter four, verse 23. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The hour's coming. Oh, it's already here. It's already here. True worshipers. What is the context for a true worshiper? Boldness. Not enough to have faith. Because you can have all the faith in the world and never proclaim it. Never use it, never exercise it, and die lost. And die without your healing. Die without the benefit of blessing anyone else in your life. You can have all the faith that's to move mountains. But if you don't proclaim it, if you don't get bold about it, if you don't take a stand for it, if you don't open your mouth, if you don't start doing something with what you've got, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Amen. It's time to come into his house. Take a stand for what you know is right. It's time every service, not one service. The hour's come and now is to get out of your pew. Step out by faith. Come to an altar. Make your petition known to God. Because after all, he is the only one that can do anything about our situation. Done been to the doctors. You've already been to the lawyers, to the counselors. Your best friends are tired and sick to death of hearing about it. They just won't tell you, but they'll tell me. Bishop, could you help me with sister so-and-so? Well, yeah, yes, yes, ma'am. What, uh, and, and what's going on? Oh, Lord, what's not going on? She called me here. She called me at Walmart. She called me up in the day, up way up in the night. She a crying and a praying and want me to pray. And I pray till I just fall asleep. And, 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 and so, you know, could you help me with that? Well, I, I don't know, but we'll see about it. You know, and then I try to make that call of encouragement. We talk to our best friend. Many of us plaster everything we're thinking on Facebook. How wonderful. How wonderful. You know, often we don't have to ask you how you're doing. We know. We know. If we know that you're hanging on by a thread and the devil's got the scissors, what else is there to know? What else is there to know? You've been putting your business on Facebook, Instagram. You know what? You ain't just telling your friends, you're telling your enemies. Somebody got to get bold and handle their business or self and quit worrying about everybody else and what they think about your business. Take your business to an altar of prayer somewhere. Get on your face before God and let God take care of the business. Woo, I've been out of here three months and here I'm already... Already up in here doing this. Joe, Joe will be three months now before I get to come back. Been on Instagram. You've been on Twitter. You've been tweeting everything. You sound like a mockingbird. Let me tell you what that secular scripture said in Romans. Amen. Chapter 13. It says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Could all that fodder on Facebook be works of darkness? Yeah. 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 
Ooh, doo, 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 doo. I need that Jeopardy theme song right now. I feel like I'm in Jeopardy. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah, right. I feel like I'm kind of in jeopardy up here. Post some pretty picture of your grandkid or something. Post some about our services, how great. Post about your victory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who, man, I'm, I'm waiting all. Pastor, I'm sorry. I hope there's somebody here when you come back. He's going to call me tonight and say, how'd it go? I said, I, th I think it went all right. I think we only lost about three or four families. <laughs> Brother Justin. Come, come on, somebody. Be bold and give us some hope. Be bold and give us something good. Be bold and start speaking things that are not as though they were. Come on, it ain't the doctors, the lawyers, or the counselors anyway. It's God Almighty and he's all by himself. And beside him there is no God. So start giving those things that you don't understand to the only one that could do anything about it in the first place. Be bold and start giving it to God. Time to do something that you ain't done in a long time. Get bold. You know, you're the only one that knows what stands between you and God's favor and his sanction. We know when we've done right. We know when we have done wrong. We know that what we're doing is, is pleasing to God. And then we know immediately, amen, through the power of God's spirit, if we're doing something that displeases the Lord. Live in an aspect which pleases the Lord. Then you don't have to live a lifestyle of apology. And you don't have to live a lifestyle that's in constant repentance of doing wrong all the time. You could live a lifestyle that lives in rejoicing. That lives in victory. That lives in an anointed, transformed way of life that brings sanction and favor to your walk with God. And let me tell you something. If you are favored of the Lord, you don't have to tell nobody. They're going to know it. They're going to see it. They're going to feel it. Somebody that's favored of the Lord, say amen. When, this, when you decide you don't care what anybody else thinks, you don't care what anybody else says, you don't care what anybody else does, when you decide to come boldly before the throne of grace, then and only then can your prayers be answered and your needs met. You know, often we don't want to come down here. We don't want to come down here. We don't want to come all the way down here. We put that cool little second. Uh, we put a comma in the sentence of the sanctuary right out there in the middle. You know, for the people who don't want to come all the way down to the front, they can come just almost to the front and feel pretty good about just hanging out there. Amen. And you know what? That was done on purpose. And that is a great step. I said, that is a great step. But you know what? We should live for God withholding nothing. Amen. Whew. I'm digging now. I'm digging now. Hey, listen. God acknowledges every step we make. God knows who needs to sit on the front row and who don't. God needs to sit on the back row and who don't. But I will tell you this. When we get over where we're sitting and start looking at where we stand before the Lord, then that's going to make a big difference in our victories. Can somebody say amen? Sometimes you just got to step out by faith. Step out and have victory. Step out and be bold. I'm telling you now, God favors the bold. Elisha told the captain of the guard of Samaria, go down to the muddiest river in the world. Dip seven times and be cleansed. The captain of the guard didn't like it. He didn't like it. He turned to his servants. He said, who does this guy think he is? 
He don't even know who I am. He don't understand how important I am. I rode all the way down here, brought this entire entourage and all these gifts, my entire harem full of beautiful women, brought them down here to meet up with the prophet of God. And he tells me, go do something stupid like dip seven times in the dirtiest river in the land. There are much cleaner rivers. There are much more beautiful streams. A little Hebrew girl that told her master she was a slave. She told her master about the prophet. She said, well, master, if he had asked you to do some great thing, would you not have done that? You want to be cleansed, don't you? You want to be cleansed, don't you? So let me ask you a little question today before I wind up here, okay? If there's some anomaly, some area of your heart, or if there's some aspect in your life, if there's some torment, trouble, dissent, doubt, fear, confusion, or even sin in your life, wouldn't you want to be free from that? Wouldn't you want to stand before the Lord today, before the service is over, with a clean heart and clean hands, and say, Lord, I want your sanction. I want the anointing of God on my life. I need the affirmation of your spirit. God, don't let me go home like I came. I want to give that back to you and let me have the boldness to stand up, to say it audibly, and to walk out of here cleansed and made whole in Jesus' name. All it's going to take is you got to get up. You got to open up, you got to speak up, and you got to manifest what you profess as, the, as our musicians come. Manifest what you profess. If we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. If we have this treasure... Are we manifesting this treasure to the world around us? Do people see us as being blessed beyond measure in God's economy? Or do they see that we struggle serving in a bankrupt state of spiritual ruin? I said, do we serve God blessed? Or do we serve God like we're bankrupt in his economy of provision? Would you stand with me today? We do not serve a bankrupt God. He has all power in heaven and the earth. He has every provision right down to our personal health. If we'll proclaim what we need. But wouldn't it be great rather than bringing our needs to the Lord today, if we were bold enough to just simply express how we intend to serve Him in the future? How we intend to speak of His glory? How we intend to be a witness and have a testimony? How we intend to teach a Sunday school class or be on the dream team? Or come and worship him in such a manner that everyone might know there is a God. And he has the power and the ability to save whoever and that which is lost. Can somebody say amen? What if we were to come to God and boldly proclaim what we're willing to do from this moment forward? You know, Joe, oft times we come and we just bring our needs to God. It's like he's some kind of great big piggy bank in the sky. And he's Santa Claus for the saints. Brother Wayne, what if we were to have enough boldness and come before him and say, Lord, you have blessed me. You have anointed my family. You have saved my children. You have gone before me and made a way. Now, Lord, here's what I intend to do for you. Here's what I intend by faith to speak unto you. Here's what I intend. That means you got to be intentional. Is somebody here today, are you intentional? Are you serving God with some intents of your heart? Come on, is somebody here intend to do something for the Lord? So these altars are now open. 
You know what? We ought to come to every service anticipating breakthroughs. We ought to come to every service anticipating healings because we serve a great physician. We need to anticipate deliverance because he is the delivering God. But we also need to come to church anticipating openings by the Holy Spirit to speak to him, minister in Jesus' name from the bottom of our hearts. So I tell you what, I'm not coming down for the Lord to bless me. I'm coming to do what the first song we sang today said. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Is there anybody who would join me down front and simply say, okay, I'm going to come bless the Lord. Here's what I intend to do. Here's how I intend to live. Here's what I intend to give. Here's how I intend to serve. Here's what I intend to do in the future. God, give me the opportunity. God, give me the chance. Is anybody here would bless the Lord? As our musicians and our singers sing, would you close your eyes and lift your hands and simply say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. In Jesus' name. This is how I fight my battle. Sing it, children. Oh, yes, glory, God. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Yes. Oh, yes. This is how I fight my battle. Somebody right now, just lift your hands. That's the first battle. time of being bold. Of being bold. I lift my hands toward you, God. This is how I fight my battle. How I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. The Lord by is in you. this house right now. It may look like I'm surrounded, yeah. but I'm surrounded. I will by be you. bold in the Lord. It may look I will like 